Uh, what is Keir Starmer's time in office likely to look at? What is your biggest concern then with this alleged super majority that is coming our way? Because coming our way, it certainly is. Rishi Sunak, of course, has talked about the uh, difficulties and the challenges and the problems with uh, a super majority and what it's likely to mean. Um, it's a frantic week of campaigning, direct appeal to the frustrated former Tory supporters. He's cautioning un an unchecked Labour government, saying it will be a disaster from which it will take decades to recover. Opinion polls show growing public concern about the prospect of a landslide Labour victory, though, in some of them. Is it coming down a little? Uh, what is your biggest concern with a potential Labour government? Let's speak to former Labour MP. Uh, Lord Wardley is with us. Good afternoon to you, sir. Hi, Ian. Um, I'm not imagining for one second you're about to give us a big old monologue now about the dangers of a Labour <laughs> government coming in on Thursday. Uh, but, I mean, it's looking as if, you know, other than something rather extraordinary happen, it's going to be a win for Keir Starmer and mm. a seismic one at that. It's looking good. And I think wherever you go and whatever sectors you've been in, there's been a palpable sense that... Britain just hasn't been working properly and people are fed up. And um, you saw the way actually that Rishi Sunak tried for a little while at the time of his party conference speech last year to, to embody the idea of, of change. Because you could see that this is a country that is in uh, is determined to have a kind of change. And it, it sort of didn't really go so well for, for Rishi and he's backed off from it. So... Mm. Yeah, I mean, I'm expecting my my former colleagues um, to to win on on, on Thursday. I'm I'm really pleased for them, but and I actually think that the that I understand why the Conservatives are talking about the dangers of uh, a very big majority because they they kind of got not much left in in the locker. But actually, for for some time, I've been saying to my Conservative friends that look, if you think that Labour is going to win you ought to want them to win with a substantial majority of MPs because the the alternative in a very tight government is that you you give a disproportionate level of authority to the fringes of the parliamentary Labour Party, the kind of um, re relatively small group of MPs now, but still potentially significant, who were fans of the former leader, Jeremy Corbyn, who would not really share Keir's agenda wholeheartedly to change the government and to move the Labour Party towards the centre of British politics. So I, I, my hope is that they have enough of, if they're going to win, that they have enough of a majority to actually think about what is genuinely going to change the country for the better, that they listen to people in doing that, but that they have some space to enact the kind of long-term decisions that this country has been crying out for for many years now. And I, th I think that's the, for me, that's the interesting bit about what is... Uh, what is change? What does change really look like? I mentioned at the yeah. beginning of the programme that now fairly famous um, Callaghan comment uh, back in 79, obviously before our time because we're youngsters, uh, oh. but as, as anoraks of politics, you'll also be aware of the... Uh, when, when Callaghan said, you know there are times, perhaps once every 30 years, when a sea change in politics, it uh, doesn't matter what you say, what you do, there's just a shift in what the public want and what it approves of, I suspect. This is, there is now such a sea change, and it's for Mrs Thatcher. Now, I think what he was pointing out there was, was right. I think you know, they kind of went out of ideas. They, mm. they, Callaghan was having a rishi moment, really, back then. Um, but with, with and, and Thatcher came in, of course, with a big plan. I don't think there's a sense that Keir has got a big plan, that this change may be a change of faces. It yeah. might be a bit of a gloss on one or two policies, bit of VAT on private schools, a few things like that. But broadly speaking, what, it, what will Starmer-like change mean? What will it look like? I think part of that is fair. Keir Starmer has a clear ambition of the kind of change that he wants. And we, he, what the, the offer that he has put to the country is to put forward a government that plays by the rules and respects institutions and, and listens to the public. And, and it is extraordinary what has happened to the Conservative Party in a really spectacularly short space of time. I mean, it was as little as two years ago that actually the, 
the Tories under Boris Johnson seemed unassailable. Uh, and um, if you were in the Labour Party, you sort of, you weren't going to admit it, but you thought you were kind of bedded in for another sort of best part of 10 years of mm. opposition. Whereas actually that collapse through and the choice came from the idea that they were just not really doing the basics of governing they were breaking their own rules and it wasn't fair and that and that and and that i think has induced more than anything the strong desire for it's time to have something different so the restoration of normality is a big part i think of Kia's message, but you're right that once they are in, they, you may be in a really strange position, one that I can't think of a precedent in British politics, where you have a really substantial majority, but without that level of real enthusiasm and understanding of what the, a new Labour government yeah. is going to do. And that is why I hope that Kia and the team will think, OK, we're in now, we've got some space, Let's really think about what it is that's going to move move the dial, bring genuine change to people's lives, and and let's set a course and stick with it. But that, I think that's going to happen probably in government rather than having to be, happened in in opposition in full view of the public before an election. I get that. I suppose if you really want to change, if a voter really want to change, they'd vote for either Reform UK or the Green Party, right? I mean, they they are parties that demonstrably are offering a seismic shift in how we do business, in what our role is as an independent nation, or in the case of the Green Party, a slightly more international feel to what they stand for. But they are parties that you could point to and go, that's real change. If you looked at, just based on the economy as an obvious example, you know, we'll grow the economy. Well, everybody wants to grow the economy. Of course, there's no, no one's going to stand up and say, oh, you know, I want to get into power and not grow the economy. Um, they've got a rough idea. They've only got so much money they can do it with, a, you know, a, a bit of a tax rise here, tax rise there. But I think any economist would look in five years' time and say, well, OK, it's a bit different, but it ain't that different. Well, I, I mean, I think you could look, um, you could see a substantial change by the and uh, by the end of the uh, five years of of a of a Labour government, and Labour is going to be tested by its ability to return the country to the levels of growth that haven't been seen in in the UK for many years now. We have all all parts of the economy, families, businesses have been suffering because of that. And, and I think that, yes, people want a change. They don't necessarily want the kind of radical ideas that some of the fringe parties um, will bring. They, they want stuff to work. You know, they want a sense that they can have faith in the political process again. And they want politicians and a government that does what it promises, mm. which is to kind of make their lives better by um, by sorting out the economy and returning to, to growth. So I think if that is the situation we're in in five years and it doesn't feel like the UK has been turned on its head, but things are working again, the economy is growing, then I think Labour will consider that they've uh, that they've done some good in, in, in office and, and feel satisfied by that. Uh, we will speak in five years' time, I'm sure, Lord Woolley, and we can, uh, we can chew the fat on this one and see what actually happened. Listen, thank you for your time. Really appreciate that, Lord Woolley. Uh, he's an advisor to the government on political violence and disruption, but a former Labour MP as well. I say but, I mean, just to give you his dual role, a former member of the Labour, uh, former Labour MP, still a member of the Labour Party.